Hi everyone, welcome to Live Coding with Code Academy. I'm Dan, an engineer at Code Academy, and today we'll be working on adding persistence to an existing project with Ruby on Rails. We'll be working on a project that's available in the Code Academy learning environment to all Code Academy Pro users. Um, you can find out more about Code Academy Pro in the video description below. Um, but if you're not a Code Academy Pro user, don't worry. We're going to be working through the project in Sublime Text and using the terminal on a Mac computer, so if you don't have Pro, don't worry, you can still follow along at home. Uh, we'll also be using code created from the last live coding project. If you weren't, um, if you didn't watch the last live coding project, don't worry, we have the solution to that project up on GitHub. Um, we have the link to that in the description, and we'll be using code from this as we work through adding persistence to this project. Um, I'll expect, you know, little HTML, JavaScript, CSS, and Rails. Um, don't worry though, you can still gain a lot just by watching and seeing how things um, come together and are built. Um, before we start, if at any point you feel like you're falling behind, don't worry, you can pause the video and resume at any point and we're going to keep the video up afterwards so you can uh, replay it whenever you need to. And if you do get confused, you should check out our Learn Rails course on CodeAcademy.com. The link to that's also in the description, and it'll teach you even more about Ruby on Rails than what I'll go through today, and it'll provide a little more background too. So the project we're going to be working on is um, Threadly, and if you were here last week, this is what the project looked like. Um, we have a text box where you can share your thoughts, and so you could type something like, hello, and when you post, the comment goes down below. Um, but you may have noticed last week, if we refresh the page, we lose the comments, and that's because we didn't add any kind of persistence to the project. And so this week we're going to work on adding persistence to the project by using Ruby on Rails. And if you're not familiar with Rails, uh, Rails is a web application framework for Ruby. Uh, it makes creating web applications really easy by providing developers with a lot of tools to get started. Um, in fact, the Code Academy website itself is built with Ruby on Rails. So you can use it for introductory projects and you can also use it for really large scale applications. So to get started, we're going to create a new project, and the way we create a new project is we're going to go into our terminal, and we're going to type Rails New. And so Rails New will create our new project, and we're going to name it Threadly. And there'll be a lot of output here. And so if you look in our code editor now, we have a ton of new files. Um, and we're not going to look at all of them today. We're going to focus on a few. Um, I'm going to CD and go into that directory that was just created. Spell it correctly this time. And once we're in our directory, we can start our application by running Rails server. And so this will start up a web server. And if we look in the output, we see that our Rails application is now starting and running at this address. I'm going to go into my browser and go to HTTP localhost 3000. And when I go there, we'll see that we have my application running. And so this is the default Rails application output. Um, it's, you'll get pretty familiar with this if you make a lot of applications. Um, so today we're going to work on adding that database persistence to this application. And the way we're going to do that is by following what's called the MVC pattern in Rails. And MVC stands for Model View Controller, and it's a technique for composing applications into three different components. Um, the three components, the model, is where we handle all our business logic and database interaction. And then our view is used to handle how we present that data to the user. And our controller is what we use to pass data between views and models. So I'm going to start off by creating a model. And we're going to do that from the command line again. And um, the way we exit our Rails server is by pressing Control and C at the same time. So that'll stop it. And so now if I go back and try to view my page now, you'll see it's, um, I'll get an error because it's not running. So now when I go to, I'll generate my model by typing Rails generate. And I'll say I want to generate a model. And the model I want to make is post. And that's what we're going to call those comments. So I hit enter. 
and we'll see that a couple files got created. We see that we have this file db migrate with um, a timestamp create post and we have this app model post.rb. Those are the two that we're going to focus on today. Uh, so I'm going to go and show you those two files. So if we look in create post, that's in app, sorry, db migrate. And this is what's called a migration file. So this describes how you want your data to look like in a database. And so we see that we're creating a table called post and we're adding a field called timestamps. So we look back at our application. We have the only thing that we want to save to the database is a single field and the field we're saving is called a comment. So we can go ahead and add a comment to that table by inside of this create table block. We can say t string, and this says create something, a column in our database called string. And now we need to give it a name, so we'll use comment. So now that we've updated our migration file, we need to update our database to have that new column in it. And the way we do that is with the rake migrate command. So we run rake db colon migrate. And we'll see that we, we migrated our database and we added our new column. So now I'm going to show how you can use um, the Rails console to interact with the model. So to get into the Rails console, we just type Rails console. And inside of the Rails console, we can type any Ruby code we want. Um, so we can do things like 2 plus 2 and see that it equals 4. Uh, but we can also interact with the model we just created. So we can get to that with post. And so this is our object that represents post in our database. And so if we want to create a new post, we can say something like new post. And we can set it equal to post.new. So now we've created a new post object, but we haven't saved it to the database yet. And before we save it to the database, we want to modify um, our comment. So we can say new post. And we want to change the comment property, so we can do comment. And we can set it equal to something like hello there. And now once we've updated the comment for our post, we can save it by doing new post dot save. And we'll see that we ran it. When we called new post dot save, this database query got ran. And this is what really makes, one of the things that makes Rails really um, quick for development is you don't have to really have a really good understanding of how MySQL or SQLite works or any database because Rails will handle a lot of those interactions for you. So now that we have our model created and we kind of have a basic understanding of how to use it, we need to work on creating a controller and a view in order to display that data for the user. So the first thing we're going to do is create our controller. And to create our controller, we're going to exit out of the Rails console again. And we're going to run another one of those generate commands. And you'll run a lot of these in Rails. And um, this is called scaffolding. And it's um, one of the ways that Rails makes development really easy. So we'll run the command Rails generate. And this time, we're going to generate a controller. And we're going to name it posts. And again, we'll see that Rails has a lot of traits bunch of new files. The one that we are going to look at is in the app controllers directory and it's the post controller. So this will start off empty and there's not much here and so it's our job to add the logic to interact with our database and to provide data to our view in here. And so to, before we do that we have to have a way for our application to get to our controller and in Rails that's done with what's called routes. And um, what a route does is it, when you get a request for a URL to the web browser, so if I go to localhost 3000 slash um, post, this request will go to Rails and it'll go to the router and the router will look at all the, the routes you've defined and it'll, it'll dispatch it to one of your controllers. And we can see all the routes that we have in our application by running the rake routes command in our terminal. 
And Rails will tell us that we don't have any routes currently defined and that we should add some to config slash routes.rb. So that's going to be what we're going to do now. So we're going to open config routes.rb. You'll see there's a lot of code in here already. Um, and these are all comments that just describe the different ways you can interact with routes. Uh, the, routes the first route we're going to create is one that's going to create actually several routes. And um, we're going to do this by using a resource route. So we'll type resource. And the resource that we want to create routes for is a, our post. So now if we go back to our terminal and we look at what routes exist by running rake routes again, we'll see that Rails has automatically generated a few routes. And this is what's, uh, the routes that it's generated are called CRUD routes, which stands for Create, Retrieve, Update, and Destroy. And um, you'll see we have our Create route, we have our Edit route, we have our Retrieve route, which is Show, and we have Update and Destroy routes. And we're going to focus on cr our create route, and we're going to also create one additional route for viewing all of our posts together. So the new route, the one new route we're also going to create is we want to create a new route for the home page. And the way you change what the home page route is is by using the root route. So we're going to type root, and then we're going to do our controller, which is post. And the action we want to do is index. Now we're going to go ahead and create that index action. And so this is our uh, controller, and right here is our action. So if we go back into app controllers, post controller, we're going to create a new action in here. And the way you create a new action is by creating a function inside of the post controller class. And our first action is going to be called index. So if we look back on our last Threadly app, we see that we, we want to get all the posts that exist and we want to display them. And we also want to create, have the ability to create a new post with a new comment. So to retrieve all the routes, we can create a new variable and we're going to call it posts. And we're going to use the at symbol in front of it. And this allows us to pass variables from our controller into the view that we're going to create afterwards. So we'll do post equal and we'll do posts dot all. And so this will retrieve all the post objects that we have and assign it to the variable post. And the one additional thing we want to do is create a new post that we'll be able to use for our form in our page. So we'll create a new post. We'll call it post new. Well, let's do a new post. That sounds better. And we'll assign it to post.new. Now we have our posts and we have our new posts. So the next step is to create a view so that we can view all of these posts and create a form there. And we're going to create our view in the app views post folder. We'll create a new file and we're going to call it index.html.erb. It was saving in the wrong directory. So in posts, we're going to create index.html.erb. And in here is where we're going to take our code from the last Threadly project, and we're going to put it inside of our ERB template. And ERB is, um, stands for Ruby template. And um, so now we'll go into our index.html from the Threadly project. And again, this code is linked to in the description of the YouTube video. And the code we're going to copy is all this code inside of this main div. And we'll paste it in. And so now we're going to start a Rails server and see what happens when we go to localhost 3000.
So our server's now started, and we'll refresh the page. And you see that we now have some code here. We have our, um, it's not styled yet, but we have the same code we had before. Um, but we don't really want these to be the same all the time. We want to be able to modify the comments. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to use our post variable that we have before, and we're going to iterate over them in a loop. And for each one, we're going to create a new li for it. So the way we do that is with an each loop. And we'll go into our comments ul. And we're going to delete what we have already. And we're going to create a new ERB block. And the way we do that is with the less than and then the percent sign. And we're going to close this. And inside, we're going to do a loop over our post. So we do our post variable, and then we want to loop over each of them. And for each of them, we're going to do a block. And this is um, a Ruby block syntax. If you're not familiar with this, you should check out the Code Academy course on Ruby. And so what's going to happen is any code we type inside of this block is going to get executed every, for every post that we have in our database. And what we want to do is create an li and output it on the page for each of these elements. So we can create our li. And inside of our li, we're going to output the text of the comment. And we do that with another ERB block, but this time we do percent equals. And the percent equals is ERB syntax that outputs whatever's inside of it onto the page. And the thing we want to output is the comment of the post. And we can do that with p.comment. So I'm going to save the file, and I can refresh the page. And we'll see that now, instead of those default comments that we had in the page before, we have our comment from the database. And we can even go back into our Rails console. And I'll Control C out of the server and go back into Rails console. And I'll do the same thing I did before to create a post. So I can create another new post. And I'll set the comment equal to And I'll save my comment or my post. And I can exit the Rails console. And we see this just like before, we have a database insert statement. And now I'll start my Rails server again. And when I refresh the page, we have our new comment that was there that we just inserted into the database. And if I refresh the page, it's still there again, and so our comment from the database are always there. So the next thing we have to do is actually allow the users to save these comments. So to do that, we're going to update our existing form and use Rails form helpers so that we can um, have Rails handle the saving of our form. So we're going to replace our form div that we have, or our form element, and the closing form element. And we're going to replace it with an ERB block. And we're going to use the Rails helper form4. And the form4 helper is a function, and you need to pass it the object you want to create a form for. And in this case, we want to create it for our new post that we created inside of our controller. And if we look back at our controller, we see that that new post was just post.new. And it's the same thing we did in the console. So back in our template, for the new post, we want to do, we're going to do another do block. And we'll use f this time. And this f represents our form object. And in place of where we had our slash form element before, we're going to use another ERB block, and we're going to end the Ruby block. So now if we look at our if we look at the existing form that we had in the inspector, we'll see that the syntax for the form just says form class equals form. But I'm going to refresh the page now that I've used the Rails form helper. And if you notice, we don't actually have any output here. 
and that's because we forgot to add, we forgot to tell to actually output anything because we didn't use the equal sign in the ERB syntax to um, instruct it that we want to actually output the form for. So now if I refresh, we'll see that we have a new form, and if I inspect it this time, we'll see that Rails has added some new stuff to it. Um, so we see that we now have an action that goes to slash posts, and the method that it uses is um, post. And if we look back at the routes that we have, we'll see that the post method for post corresponds to a, is being routed to a controller post and to an action called create. So now, in order for us to save it, we need to implement that create action inside of our post controller. So let's go back into our post controller and we're going to create a new method called create. So this is the action that will get called when we hit that post URL with a post HTTP method. So we're going to use another Rails um, convenience method and the convenience thing we're going to use is called uh, params and the params will allow us to validate that the data that was passed to our um, method was correct. And I'm going to create a new, another method and I'm going to create a private method. And you use private methods so that you can't route to them. Any method that's public on a Rails action controller will be, is considered one that you can route a URL to. So we're going to use private because we don't want this to actually be a method that can handle a request. And we're going to call it post params. And we're going to use another Rails helper called params. And with params, we're going to require that we have a post. And with our post, we're going to permit one field to be modified. And we're going to allow the comment to be modified. And so now when we call this function, Rails will look at our parameters that we have, that we pass to the route. And it'll make sure that there's one for post. And it'll make sure that the only parameter that exists for that is comment. Now, just like we did on the terminal, we're going to modify our create route so that we actually create the post that we've retrieved. So we'll create a new variable and we'll call it new post. And we'll assign our new post to post.new, but this time we're going to pass it parameters that we get from calling our post params function. And so this will get our parameters that we pass and pass them into the new post object. And once we have our new post, we're going to call new post.save. And once the post is saved, we want to redirect the user back to the home page. And so we redirect them back to the home page with the redirect to method. And when you have redirect to, you need to pass it a URL to direct them to. And Rails has helpers for any route that exists on your page. So you can see the help we have root for going back to our home page. So we can get the URL to that by calling root and then underscore path. And this will generate a URL that goes back to the home page. And the last thing we have to modify is we need to update our HTML so that our input fields are also Rails input fields. And we do this by using form helpers again. And we'll, I'll first, we can go ahead and delete this input. And we're going to make another ERB block. And inside of it, we're going to do f.text field. And so this will create a text field that's set up to be submitted by this form. And we're going to get, pass it comment, which is the name of that field. And just like before, we can set placeholder text on it. And we're going to set the placeholder text to share your thoughts. And we're going to do the same thing for our submit input. And instead of using the f text field method, we're going to use f.submit. And we're going to pass, we're going to call the field post. And we're going to give it a class of 
BTN so that we can style it like we did before. So now when I refresh my page, uh, first I have to remember to start my Rails server. And when I refresh the page, see that we have our form here. Um, it looks just like before, but if we inspect the element, uh, we see that our parameter is now called post comment, um, whereas before it was just called comment. And this is, goes back to the post params method that we defined. So when we submit that form, we're going to have it's going to see that we have a post because that's the post parameter, and it's going to see that there's a comment field because we have that comment right there. And this is all handled by Rails, um, so it makes it it's really, really helpful. It makes you be able to develop really quickly. So now that we have our create method and we have our template updated to have, use the Rails form helpers, we can go ahead and see if we can share our thoughts and we'll And when we post, we see that we now have our new uh, we just our new comment down below and if we refresh the page it's still there and so now we've handled all of the persistence parts so the next step is we're going to want to take what we had before which is this really nice looking form and we're going to want to do the same thing in Rails and this is just as simple if you know how to do CSS in static websites doing it in Rails is just as easy so we're going to go back to our Threadly project that we did before and we're going to go into our styles.css file and we can actually copy just all the styles that we wrote before and we can just go into our Rails application and we'll go into the app assets folder and inside of there there's a folder called style sheets and we're going to put all these styles we can just paste them into the application.css file. And now if I refresh the page, we'll see that our styles are here, but um, a little bit different. And that's because before we were using Bootstrap, so we also have to include our Bootstrap CSS. And if we want our fonts to look like it did before, we should also include that Google style sheet font. So if we look back at our index.html in our solution code, and again, the solution code is just in the description. We, have, we see that we added these two links for our style sheet files, for the Google font and for the Bootstrap CDN. So we can actually copy those and we're going to be able to put those into Rails. And the place we're going to put that is in a layout. So if you look in the app views layouts folder, you'll see we have this one called application.html.erb. And a layout file is what decorates different controllers. So when a controller and action pair get run, they return some code. And they, with the code that they return is HTML. And whatever HTML they return will get placed in, by this yield function. So when we call this yield function, it tells Rails to output the contents that was returned by the controller and action onto the layout at this location. So we can make use of this by modifying our layout, which gets included on all of our pages and we can add style sheet tags for our bootstrap and our google font url and if you look rails has already added two of them for they added one for our style sheet link tag and one for a javascript tag so we're going to add two style sheet link tags and we'll do application and the second thing we pass is the url that of the font or of the CSS file we want to include. So I'm going to copy and paste from our solution code. And I'll end my ERB block. And I'll create another one. And use the style sheet link tag again, but this time I'll use the bootstrap URL. And again, I'll just copy and paste from the solution. If I go back to my page and refresh, 
see that we have, oh, it looks like I created two. So Rails is also really nice at detecting syntax errors. So if you ever have a syntax error, Rails will tell you which line it occurred on, and sometimes it'll even tell you why it occurred. So we see that we had a syntax error on line six of our layout, and it was because we had two of these ERB uh, echo blocks. So I'll remove the first and refresh the page, and now it looks like we had before. Um, the only thing we're missing is we don't have our header that says Threadly, so we can take our header that was in our solution code, and I'm going to paste this on into our layout right above the yield statement, because we want to have our header show on all of our pages that we might make later. And if I go back to the Threadly page and refresh, that we have our heading here and we go back and forth it looks just about the same and I'll create a new comment in our Rails app and I'll say and I'll post and there's my new comment down below and so now our, func our two websites function just about the same except now our Rails one has persistence and we can refresh the page over and over again, and our comments will still be there, but our old static JavaScript page, we see that this won't get saved. And it'll show up once, but when I refresh, we lose it. And so that's um, the power of using Ruby on Rails. We can create pretty functional websites really fast. Um, if you want to learn more about Rails, you should be sure to check out our course on Ruby and Rails that we have below in the description. And if you're interested in doing more projects like these in, on Codecademy, you should check out Codecademy Pro, which we also have a link to in the description. And I'm going to try to answer a few questions now, if, um, since we have some time. Um, so can we do what we did today with only Ruby and not Rails? Um, you certainly could. It would be much, much harder um, if you, the amount of code that's been written to create um, Ruby on Rails is pretty vast. Um, and so using Rails just speeds up development a lot. Um, I personally wouldn't try to create a website without using something like Ruby on Rails. It just, it's a, a lot of code you're going to have to write that you, it just, it takes a longer time. So I wouldn't do it. Um, why are forms used to pass the input data back and forth to the DB? Is this a good way to do things in most cases? Um, yeah, you can, forms are a perfectly fine way to pass data from the views to the database. Um, one thing you'll see that we used is, um, that's why we used those post params before. So if I go back into my controller, Um, the post params ensures that only the data that we want to go into our database gets there. So we're only allowing a comment to be passed in. And the other thing Rails does is active record, the thing that um, handles the database interactions, has a lot of security features built in, and so um, it's pretty safe. And um, you should use forms. They are good, and they'll make development faster. Um, so... One question is, do route, so routes what, te, are, what tell the server what URLs to access? Uh, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Um, so when you get a request, so you can see like if I scroll up here, we see in our log that we started get for slash. So when Rails sees this request, it'll go to the router and it'll ask the router what is, cap what is set up to handle a request to slash. And because we used in our routes, we said the route can be handled by post index. Rails will now, the router will route that URL to the post index um, act, controller and action pair. If you close the server and reopen it, will we still have the post save? Um, well, let's find out. So we're going to we'll type a few posts. Hey, there. Will this be saved when I restart? And if I post that and refresh, it's there right now, but let's see if I exit my server and I'll, now it's not running. And if I 
start it up again and refresh, we'll see that it is in fact saved. And that's because we've saved that post into a SQLite database. And so if you restart the application, it'll always, it'll come back. Um, how can we tell what code goes in each file in the file system navigator? Um, this is something that you kind of will learn over time, but it's also one of the things that makes Rails really nice because Rails kind of um, sets it up so there's only certain places you can put certain things. Um, it creates all these directories for you, so if you look in app, you know that your controllers will go in controllers, your views will go in the views folder, your models will go in the models folder, and um, Rails is really good at convention. Um, so it, it wants you to do things a certain way, and if you try to do things a different way, you'll kind of see quickly that you're not meant to do that. Um, uh, to reverse the post output, making a post go to the top of the list instead of the bottom, would you recommend that be done using CSS or in the controller in the model? Um, I would recommend that you do it in the controller, and you can, um, I'm not going to show it right now, but you can write a query that will, instead of retrieving just by, I, by default, when you do post.all, it'll retrieve them from the first ID to the last ID, um, but you could do something like retrieve the newest post instead of the um, oldest post. If the class equals comments, then why is the post comment and not comments? Um, so the class is post, not comments. And so our, if I, um, if we look back at our um, post, we can go to our migration. It's, so our, the class that we have is post, and one of its properties is comment. So it's um, not that we have a comment that has a comment. We have a post with a comment. Um, can Rails be used to develop mobile apps too? Um, it, you can't make native apps with Rails, but you can make um, web applications that are mobile friendly. Um, and for those of you who don't know, a native application is one that you could, for instance, download in the Apple App Store or in the Android App Store. Um, and then does the percent sign call a Ruby specific template engine? Yeah, so the percent sign is specific to um, the ERB syntax and you use that whenever you want um, to do something, an ERB specific thing or when you want to call a Ruby function. And I think that's um, about as much time as we have for questions. Um, thanks everyone for joining today and again you should check out the course on Ruby on Rails on CodeAcademy.com and you should check the link to Pro if you want to um, get even more in depth on um, and extra help on learning Ruby on Rails. And thanks everyone for joining and have a great day.